This video was made possible by World of Tanks, a team-based MMO action game dedicated to mid-20th century armored combat. In the closing days of the Second World War, the entire world knew that Japan had lost. Even the Japanese government was aware that by 1945 they had no realistic chance of winning the war. Their navy and air force had been shattered, they were out of fuel, they were losing ground all over and after the surrender of Germany and Europe, they knew that they would become the focus of 100% of the continued allied war effort, which was basically the entire rest of the world by this point. Japan knew that they couldn't win the war, but Japan also didn't want to surrender unconditionally the same way that Germany just had. So they prepared an all-out defense of the Japanese home islands, and the United States planned an insane invasion that would have dwarfed the D-Day landings in both scale and loss of life. It would have been the largest military operation in human history, and it would have prolonged the war at least into 1946 and probably into 1947 or even beyond. Millions of casualties on both sides would have probably taken place. But in the end, none of it ever happened, because in reality, the United States dropped two atomic bombs and the Soviet Union entered into the war against them. Two extremely bad circumstances that finally convinced Japan to surrender unconditionally. But if the atomic bombs were never utilized for whatever reason, and Japan continued to refuse a surrender, here is how a United States-led invasion of the Japanese home islands would have played out. Out. The United States co-named their invasion of Japan Operation Downfall. America knew that any invasion of Japan would be an incredibly difficult prospect. In her entire history, Japan has never once been conquered by an outside invader, largely because of Japan's sheer geography. I recently made an entire video about this, so go check that out if you need a refresher. But in summary, the Japanese islands are far away from any other major landmass, which makes transporting troops and supplies across the open ocean to fuel the invasion difficult. There are very few suitable beaches to choose from for a D-Day style amphibious landing, which enables the Japanese to basically defend all of them since there aren't that many to defend, and Japan's interior is covered in mountains and rivers that don't really connect to each other, which would make a guerrilla-style resistance in the interior extremely difficult to defeat. Nonetheless, America had invaded and occupied the island of Okinawa by June 1945 in order to use it as a base of operations in the future invasion. Okinawa, you see, is only 550 kilometers away from the Japanese mainland, and it would be from here that America would launch Operation Downfall, tentatively scheduled to begin on November 1st, 1945. 14 American divisions, or over half a million men, were going to land across 35 separate beaches at three different points on the southern Japanese island of Kyushu. They were to storm the beaches and push deeper into the island before halting once roughly one-third of the island was occupied. The attack would then switch into a defense and an occupation, while the occupied portion of Kyushu would be used as the new base of operations for air attacks across all of Japan and as a base to launch the main Allied offensive on Tokyo from. This subsequent invasion of the island of Honshu was co-named Operation Coronet, and it would have been even bigger. Tentatively scheduled to begin on March the 1st, 1946, Operation Coronet was planning on using 40 divisions from the United States, United Kingdom, and Commonwealth forces to launch from occupied Kyushu and land at two points on the Kanto Plain surrounding Tokyo, on the Boso Peninsula and at Sagami Bay. For comparison's sake, the entire higher D-Day invasion utilized only 12 divisions, compared to the 40 required for Operation Coronet and the 14 previously required for occupying Kyushu. After landing and establishing a beachhead, the Allies would then have driven north and inland from their landing positions in a pincer attack on Tokyo. They would have landed at least 12 more divisions for reinforcements and then attacked Tokyo together with well over 2 million soldiers. Following the occupation of Tokyo, it was then assumed that the Japanese government would surrender. The Allies planned to use over 6 million men, 42 aircraft carriers, 24 battleships, 400 destroyers, and tens of thousands of bombers and fighters in their invasion of the Japanese mainland. But what were Japan's plans for a defense against the biggest armada ever assembled in human history? The Japanese defensive strategy for the home islands was co-named Operation Katsugo, and it was quite formidable. It called for an all-out fanatical defense of the island of Kyushu to halt the Allies before they could get a foothold on the mainland and threaten Tokyo. 
40% of all of Japan's remaining ammunition was concentrated on the island, while Japanese intelligence correctly assumed the landing beaches that the Allies would attack at. By this point in the war, Japan had been shattered, but they still had 4.3 million trained soldiers that they were planning on committing to the defense of the islands. However, Japan only had enough ammunition and supplies to properly equip 1.2 million of those men. So it would be those men on the beaches that would be confronting the Allies. In addition to those trained soldiers, the Japanese government planned on literally committing the entire population of Japan to resist the invasion. All men in the country aged 15 to 60 and all women aged 17 to 40 were going to be conscripted and armed with basic rudimentary weapons or even bamboo spears to join in the defense. That amounted to roughly 31.5 million people in Japan in addition to the 4.3 million trained soldiers. Technically, the Japanese defense vastly outnumbered the Allied invasion force of 6 million total men, but again, only 1.2 million of the Japanese numbers would be properly equipped and trained soldiers. In addition, because of Japan's poor natural resources, the government was essentially out of oil by this point. Japan only had five aircraft carriers and four battleships remaining, all of which were damaged, and none of which had enough fuel to carry out sorties. So, they planned on keeping the ships anchored in harbors and using their anti-air guns to defend against allied air attacks. But one thing that Japan still had a lot of at this point was planes. Well over 12,000 of them still, even at the end of the war. The vast majority of these planes were intended to be used as kamikaze suicide attacks on allied ships and transport ports as they came close to the beaches. The Japanese planners assumed a hit rate of one in every six kamikaze attacks, but they hoped to simply overrun the allied ships with their vast swarms of thousands of planes all at once as if they were locusts. The Japanese planners hoped to sink 400 allied ships and transports with these style of attacks, combined with small manned suicide torpedoes, suicide divers who would swim underneath ships with mines, and thousands more of kamikaze motorboats laden with explosives. The Japanese defense of Kyushu was going to be all out and metal, but it left little in reserve for the defense of Tokyo and the Kanto Plain if they failed. Japan's primary objective was to make the cost of invasion too high for the Allies to accept, and force a kind of armistice where Japan could hopefully hang on to some of its conquests, rather than admitting a total defeat and losing everything. It's unknown exactly how many lives would have been lost as a result of the invasion. American planners estimated that somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million American soldiers would have died as a result of the operation, along with hundreds of thousands of additional British and Commonwealth soldiers. At the same time, estimates for Japanese deaths as a consequence ranged between 5 million and 10 million. The war would have been extended well into 1946 and probably pushed into 1947 or even beyond. The United States minted 500,000 Purple Heart medals in anticipation for how many they'd have to give out to wounded American soldiers. But none of that ever happened. The American government decided to use the atomic bomb and the Soviet Union invaded Manchuria and Japan surrendered without the invasion ever taking place. And honestly, it's probably ultimately a good thing that events went that way, and millions of people managed to stick around with us when they otherwise wouldn't have. Now, if you're really into hypothetical World War II history, and you want to have some fun while you learn about something, you should go and check out World of Tanks for PC next. It's free to play, but it's rich with detail, with 11 different nations worth of tanks, all based on real historical tank models to experience and choose from, and over 30 maps all inspired and based on real-life locations. It's honestly more than just a shooting tank game. You really do get to learn a lot about the history and design of real historical tanks, like the German Tiger or the Soviet T-34. If that sounds like the kind of game that you'd enjoy playing, you can play for free by clicking the link in the description, but best of all, you can use the code TANKTASTIC while signing up to get 7 days of premium, 500 gold, and a tier 3 premium tank, the Soviet T-127, all for free in addition. So go ahead and check it out and help support real-life lore at the same time, and as always, Thank you for watching.